Now we present our pastor. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise Glory Lord. to God. Amen. See, talent, so much talent is around us and in this house. And we give God the glory for his goodness to us. Amen. We're continuing the study on the journey that leads to wholeness. And we'll go back to John, to Luke chapter 15 rather. Luke chapter 15, verse 14. If you dare say amen. amen. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he began to be in want. Please turn with me to Psalm 63. Psalm 63, verse 1. Psalm 63, verse 1. O God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee, my flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. In a dry and thirsty land where no water is. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your everlasting love. We thank you for your word. And we ask that through the power of the Holy Spirit, you would come and dwell with us. And you would have mercy upon us today. And you would impart to us your goodness and your mercy. And as we study your word, we pray that you would give us the grace to apply your word to our heart. For we trust you and we trust your word. Because your word says that before one jot or one tittle of your word passes, heaven and earth pass away. So we thank you for the surety of your word. And we trust you now as you write them upon our heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. amen. And amen and amen. The Bible is clear. And one of the things we see today happening in the church world, and Jesus said that this would happen, there is a great falling away. There's a great falling away from true Christianity, from what it means to be a follower of Christ. Followers of Christ read the word of God and abide by the word of God. We live by the word of God. We believe that the word of God is true. We believe that there are no errors in scripture. We believe that they were given by divine inspiration of God for our rebuke, for our comfort, it was given so that we would lack nothing when it comes to the knowledge of God. But now we see that the church and pastors think that we must become modern and that God has changed with time. But God has not changed with time. God is the immutable God. He is the unchangeable God. God does not become corrupt so that we might find comfort 
being corrupt. He does not become immoral so that we might find comfort or an excuse to be immoral. God does not change. So what's the cause of all of this? Sin. Sin has taken root in the human nature and sin is manifesting itself in various ways in our lives. We talked about self-will, the self-willed person. We talked about the selfish person. We talked about how sin and selfishness separates us from relationship, from family, and from each other and from God. We talked about sensuality, the gratification of the sense or the indulgence of the flesh. David came out on his rooftop one evening. He probably had just had his dinner and his nice wine to drink with his meal. And he came out on the top of his roof and he was walking around. People were known to pray on top of their roofs and to go there for devotion and, and for quiet time. And, and the war was going on, a war was waging and, and, and his soldiers were out there fighting. But he was home. And he looked at the neighbor's house and his neighbor happened to be one of the soldiers in his army. His name was Uriah. And he saw Uriah's wife taking a bath. And the Bible said she was a fine woman to look upon. She was beautiful. And he came down and he sent some messages over and he says, go and bring that woman to me. She had just gone through her purification, gone through her monthly schedule, and it was now eight days after. She had gone through her purification, so she was able to come to the king's house because she was now clean. Isn't it funny how we can take a clean thing and mess it up? And she came over and he cajoled her into going to bed with him and she did. He was the king. Yeah. Wow. Who's gonna say no to the king? probably even promised her that her husband would be promoted, he would get raise of pay, she would be taken care of. As long as she keep it quiet, everything is gonna be all right. A couple of weeks after that, she sent to him and she told him, she says, tell the king I'm pregnant. Now he doesn't know what to do with himself. He sent for Uriah. Uriah came and he wanted to trick Uriah and to give the baby to Uriah. So he said to Uriah, go home and wash your feet. Uriah said he couldn't do that. Somebody came to David and said, Uriah is outside, still sleeping with his soldiers out there. And David said, didn't I send you home, man? David said, it is unreasonable of me to go home and sleep with my wife when you're, the other soldiers are out here sleeping in the cold. When the tabernacle of God has no tent, the ark of the covenant has no tent. 
So it is unreasonable for me, O king, to go home and sleep with my wife. You can read it in 2 Samuel chapter 11. And David said, all right, you're a faithful servant. I'm going to promote you, man. You're now captain of the army. Watch promotion, you know. Watch promotion. It could be a setup for demotion. <laughs> and he sent him and he said, you must ride in front. You must lead the battle. Because David knew if he sure that. And he killed Uriah. And he thought it was covered up, you know. Well, as far as it's concerned, it's only Bathsheba and myself who know about this. So we're going to keep that quiet. But I tell you all the time, whatever is secret to us, is open scandal in heaven. God sent a prophet to him. Nathan came to him and Nathan said, O king, there was a rich man who had a whole herd of sheep. He, he had so many sheep for himself. And there was a poor man who had only a little lamb. And the rich man sent and took the poor man's lamb and slaughtered it. David got mad. David said, such a man should be put to death immediately. Careful how you judge. And when he was finished pronouncing the sentence upon the man, Nathan said, hold on, bro. King David, you are that man. He just passed the sentence of death upon himself. He allowed his sensuality to commit such an egregious act. And he did not know what to do with himself now. He realizes, I forgot that God sees everything. All of a sudden, a 300 watt floodlight was turned on. And he realized that God sees everything. The same thing happened to this young man. As he went away from home and he thought that, well, my family is not here. My brother who judges me harshly is not here. My mother is not around. My father is not around. That's why I came so far away so that I would come to a place where nobody knows me and I can do as I please. So he had a ball. But the Bible said that the party came to an end. The party came to an end. I had a friend who always said that when the star is dead, the movie is finished. <laughs> Are you watching the movie? When the star is dead, it's the end of the movie. When you're starring your own show, it's going to come to an end. It's going to come to an end. The Bible says, and when he had spent all, there arose a great famine in that land. 
and he began to be in one. So we're talking today about spiritual destitution. You've gone through the self-will, you've gone through the selfishness, you've been separated from God and family, and now you're in a bitter, lonely place, and all your senses begin to develop needs and wants, and you have satisfied all your senses with everything except good morals. And now, You've spent all. You've wasted your time, your treasure, and your talent. And all the while, I wish I was a Christian. I'd never left Christianity to go out in the world at age 14. I wish I never did. Most of you wish you were Christians earlier. Hallelujah. You look back at your life and you look at the joy you have in Christ Jesus and you say, had I known glory to God had I known what I know today I would have given my heart to Jesus you see that word regret it's a terrible word had I known all of this I would have given my heart to Jesus. But now you have given your heart to Jesus. Remember that the story here is not about the unsaved. The story is here about a son, two sons, two children of the family. They are not unborn. These are two born again Christians. They are children of the family. They're not wayward children. You see, often we, we mix up this thing and we call everybody a child of God. Not everybody is a child of God. They are all creations of God, but they are not all children of God. If they are out of Christ Jesus, if your son, if your daughter, if your brother, if your sister don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, they are not children of God. Amen. You get that straight. You must be born again yes. to be called a child of God. You're either a rabbit or not a rabbit. You're either a Christian or not a Christian. You can't be in between. You must be born again to be a child of God. So you must know him through that experience. So this child of God had gone away. He had gone into a place, a dark place that some of us go from time to time. And Sister Morris was telling you, encourage your children to learn to play music. Some people are never going to learn to play music, though. Some people are born with this talent, and it is manifested as it is brought out. It's harder for some people, but everybody can learn a tune or two. Not everybody is a singer. They sound like they're singing, but they can never sing on key. No matter how much you try. A lot of people love to sing, but that does not make them singers. I wonder how some of these people sell records, because when I listen to them, I say, oh my God. How do these people sell records? They can't sing, but they're putting it on track and they're selling it. They're making a joyful noise. 
and it sells. So this young man had reached a place in his life where he became destitute. Destitution means such extreme want as threatening life unless you are relieved or delivered. Such extreme want as threatening life unless you are relieved or delivered. The Greek word we want to look on is lapo, which really means to be, to lack or to be wanting. The Hebrew word is ara, And so we find that God sees us where we are. Sometimes he allows us to go a long ways before he starts pulling us back. So you find yourself in a dark place. You are destitute. I heard a woman call the radio station yesterday for prayer and she was just bawling. She was crying. She said, I can't go on anymore. I'm in a hard place. I cannot go on anymore. A young lady called me here last week. Brother Wright and, and Brother Williams were here. She called me to tell me that she is about to kill herself. So I had to give her some tough love. I have to tell her, remember, you brought yourself where you are. It's not God who brought you there. Because she said, God does not want to have anything to do with her. And the problem she has, all of it, she brought them on herself. Can't blame God for what you do to yourself. God didn't bring this on this young man. He brought it on himself. And so he became, he came to that place where many people come to in life. The only thing that is worse than this is death. The only thing that is worse than this is death. He was looking back at his situation. He had a lot of regrets. I know he regretted the day he went to his father and said, give me my estate now. I know he regretted when he sold his father's property and he took his father's money. Remember, none of this is his yet, you know, because his father was still alive. All that he was spending belonged to his father. Because his father was still alive. Remember, Jesus says that a testament cannot come into effect until the testator is dead. So he took his father's money and he wasted it. Everything you have in your life belongs to God unless you are not a child of God. Amen? Amen? Everything. That's why you can't force the non-Christian to tithe. You can't force the non-Christian to give. Because they do not belong to the kingdom of God. So they don't have that obligation but you as the child of God has that obligation. Everything you have belongs to God. God is not asking you for anything that does not belong to him. So God 
saw this young man. He spent all. And what a time for there to be a famine when you're broke. You see, when there's a famine, there is inflation. The price of everything goes up now. Amen? Whenever there's a famine, and the price of everything goes up. There is an inflation. Demand is greater than supply. That's inflation. Whenever demand is greater than supply, you call that an inflation. The prices are inflated. Everything go up. So this young man was spiritually destitute. Hallelujah. Depression sets in. Shame sets in. You begin to wonder, I left everything good at home, but I can't go back home. Those people who know me in town, if they ever see me like this, I hope nobody comes to town who knows me. Because if should they go back and tell my father what I look like, what I am now, this would be make him feel real bad. Real shame. A famine broke out. There comes a famine. The soul is destitute. The heart is aching. Shame has taken place. There is a hunger for the steak you used to have at home. There's a thirst for the nice lemonade. The good punch that the servant would bring and pour, and pour, and pour. All the good things you are missing, you are
our God and our Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for the gift of your salvation. We thank you for the invitation that says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. And we respond with the word of the songwriter. I'm coming home. Coming home, Lord. I'm coming home. Lord, let us not be afraid or ashamed to come back home because your arms are open wide to receive us. Lord, bless this congregation from the youngest to the oldest. And grant that this week, as we go through the week, we will know that you are with us no matter what happens. Lord, we pray for your keeping and your guiding and your protection. And grant that everything that we shall say or do this week shall be only for your glorification. We say thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. And amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Number 409 is our closing hymn. Number 409. Thanks to God whose word was spoken. Lord, we go from this place trusting you. We go from this place believing you. We go from this place knowing that your word is true. We ask you now, Lord, that you would go with us to our several place of abode, that you would go to our homes now and prepare a nice atmosphere for us. We go that you'll make the wrong things right before we enter our house, Lord, so that your grace and your mercy may go with us. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you. And the Lord give you peace, now, henceforth, and forevermore.